Hey kids, it's Stressor James, and I'm Stressing Three Flames. We're looking at Mega Raptor. So uh, again, this is the newest thing out. I checked online. I do not see any other models of this animal. Um, it's on the Jurassic World so far, and I'm saying so far because it's a longer story. But I, I have a feeling that if Jurassic World makes it, it will be popular. Other companies will make them as well. But this is a figure. It's the Roar Strikers Mega Raptor. Um, there's the box. It comes with. You know, like Pluridon, Iguanodon, and a, a uh, Sinoceratops, which I can't already had that one over there. Did a video on that last week. Let's see? So, to free it from the box. Oh, just one strap. Okay. So, there's only, there's only one uh, elastic strap on the leg closest to the box. See? Oh, the feet are stuck. Great, great, great. So if you can't even see the wrapping, uh, the plastic part. So yeah, they all kind of do this now. So basically, you open the bottom, you turn this little foot tab, freeze the foot, turn the other foot tab, freeze that foot, and here it is. And of course, the tail's inside there too. So there you go. Now it's free. Take the tail. And plug it in. All right, so put that right in there. Turn. And I believe that's the top. Yeah, that's the top. So, one thing I will tell you, I've been reviewing these Jurassic World figures, and uh, to make them roar, you actually press down. On the hip. I've been doing it wrong the entire time. To be fair, I'm not necessarily reviewing the toys as toys, I'm reviewing them scientifically. Uh, same with the other figures, they have the Jurassic World, the uh, DNA information there. Now, looking at this creature, I will tell you that I'm not surprised as a toy, but there's, there's a story. So, Mega Raptor. So, what's going on with this? So, like in the late 97, late, late 90s, uh, South America, you, they find a claw. Now, the word raptor, know this. Raptor means bird of prey. Uh, it means thief in Latin. Uh, the word raptor, most people think, focuses mainly on dromaeosaurs. I have a video on dromaeosaurs. I'll, I'll put a link below. But the idea is that that name is used in a lot of animals that are not dromaeosaurs. Uh, interesting enough, when they first found this, they found a claw. Now, this is a cast of a Danonychus claw. And, they, and, and basically, this is supposed to be a cast of Velociraptor claw. So, as I pointed out in my dromaeosaur video, uh, Velociraptor, not quite the scale, but they're, they're generally smaller than Danonychus. And, of course, Utraptor has even bigger claws, right? So, if they find a claw that's like 13 inches long... Uh, estimating that the claw itself with the covering, the thief, would be 16 or so inches. And be, this to explain that for you, uh, if you have a cat or a dog, you look at their claws, there's like the outer covering part that's hard or the keratin part. There's the inner part that can bleed if you cut it the wrong way or something happens to it or it gets damaged. So like that's what you're seeing here. This is just the bony claw, the little blood vessel going along here. Uh, we find that more often find than, than the actual thief. It can be found. There are some specimens they find the thief covering it too or part of the thief. So, that's one thing to point out. So they find a claw that's 13 inches long, and that's just the claw of the thief. They're going to assume, given the shape and, and curvature, that it was a dromaeosaur. So with that size range, doing like a ratio, the assumption is that this animal was like 30 feet long. Now, bear in mind, the largest dromaeosaur that we know of is Utahraptor at about 20 to 23 feet, I think, the 21, somewhere in that range, feet long, right? about three meters I'm sorry seven meters so we have one with a bear claw and they're like wow that's that's huge it's a, it's a mega raptor but it turns out uh finding more specimen in the early 2000s they found actually the arm four limbs so not, not the whole arm but four limbs vertebra like that and it turns out that giant claw was not on its foot as you see that the feet here are very flat it's actually on the hand so the name mega raptor already sits has already been established is you know there's no reason to change it, it's just what it is on the papers. So now it's thought to be a giant dromaeosaur, when it's not, but it was thought to be a dromaeosaur when it was first found. So that being said, uh, it's a different kind of dinosaur. Now, you say big claw in your hand, the first thing most people think of, hopefully if you know paleontology, are, are uh, spinosaurus, like baryonyx and spinosaurus. They have a really large finger in their hand. Uh, so that's one thought about where it fits in the family tree, and that's kind of why I've been holding off this topic, because Megaraptors are 
a new frontier. And what I'm saying is, kids always ask me, what's the biggest dinosaur, what's the fastest dinosaur, could a T-Rex be the Juniosaurus, could a Spinosaurus be the Carcarnia? You know, most, I, I don't really look into that, frankly. Um, what makes me excited are new groups. So the classic story of this are the Therizinosaurus, now made famous by Jurassic World. And the idea is they're finding these giant claws. I've done a video on this already, but they, they find a giant claws. It's not a ornithomimid, it's not a raptor, it's not an allosaur, it's not a prosaur, probably from the hips, you know, these, these lower body parts. It, it doesn't fit into the groups we knew of the time. And even though even then, we haven't found very much of Therizinosaurus, but we found many Therizinosaurus. So finding multiple relatives of this animal, we were able to put together what it looks like. So say, for example, uh, it would be very crude, but say uh, you, you found the fossil of a early human. And humans have our anatomy, and you have lots of it missing. If you find fossils from monkeys and chimps and, and baboons, enough of those things, they're all primates. So in general, yeah, you may have only a, an ulna from a human and an ulna from a gorilla. Well, we're overall very similar in anatomy compared to other life forms. So with that, they're put, you, you can put together what a primate is. If not a human, a primate, right? Well, with the with the Therizinosaurus, that's what happened, is that uh, the ones we found, we found enough of them to know, okay, this is its own species, and there's other relatives from Asia and North America, and they're a new group. I say new, I mean, we've been trying to figure out throughout the last century, but we now know Therizinosaurus, what it is. The Megaraptors are like that, but for this century. So they're early Cretaceous dromaeosaurs, I'm oh, sorry, early Cretaceous thoropods, but we're not quite sure where it fits in. Uh, there have been arguments that they were, of course, dromaeosaurs first. That's kind of been squashed. I don't really believe that anymore. But now I've heard arguments. I've read arguments. I've heard. I've read arguments about maybe they're spinosaurs. I can tell you this. As close as relatives, and again, not that it is, but as close as relatives, there's, uh, this is the collect a Fuki raptor. Uh, I'm maybe saying Fuki raptor. I can't, I'm not saying it right, probably. Um, from Japan. This is an Australvenator. So Megaraptor relatives are found in South America, Asia, and Australia. This is Australvenator. So these animals are not their close relatives, but in the toy world, these are the closest things you can find to this. Um, I will also add on my, on my uh, a link below on my page where, on my Thoropod page of toys, you'll see like, you know, Ceratosaurs and, and Solorosaurs and Tyrannosaurs and all that, right? I'm always updating based on papers, so you might see an animal in one section and I'll have to move it different sections because when the paper comes out, I'm trying to keep up with the data. So in general, these guys are are not, they don't fit quite in with the Allosaurs and the Tyrannosaurs, you know, they're just kind of middle group here. And we're trying, and people are writing papers now trying to figure out where they fit in with the fossils we have. So Megaraptor is a, a, a child of that situation. now. Bigger picture, what is it related to? What is it closest to? Well, what makes it confusing is that if you look at the skull, the head, it has a very thin, narrow, arrow-shaped head, like an, like, like an allosaurid, right? So, I mean, you look at it, and again, a lot of animals in the late Jurassic or Cretaceous are considered either allosaurid or allosaurid cousins. So it's a very narrow snout like these guys, and that kind of fits in, right? But allosaurids weren't known for having huge forelimb claws, like, you know, the first toe. So... Uh, one of the bigger big breakthroughs in paleontology, one of the bigger debates, I guess, are the Tyrannosaurus and how we know the, you know, Tyrannosaurus rex and Gorgosaurus and Albertosaurus and Carbosaurus, all, all the bigger known ones. There are another group of slender Tyrannosaurus that are found um, in Asia, particularly, and other parts. And so, their T. Rex is the last of the Tyrannosaurus. It's the, it's the final, not final product, as if they were making them, and that's like it, it was the last one they made that evolved, right? And so the other cousins and branched off groups. And so there's a lot of animals like um, Proceratosaurus that are being lumped in the base of the Tyrannosaurus family. So the argument is Megaraptor could be in that. Now I'm not saying Megaraptor is a Tyrannosaurus. I'm not saying it will have a killing bite, you know. But the idea of Tyrannosaurus being large, crushed, jaw-crushing crushing animals, that's very much a late Cretaceous development. The early Cretaceous Tyrannosaurus were very slender and narrow, and they were living under the shadow of the Allosaurid line, the Allosaurid group. So Megaraptor could be that too. So it's one of those things where I look forward to, in the future, uh, one more toys coming out. Actual, like, Collecte, Papo, Carnegie, 
coming out and more papers and more findings because there are like seven different genera in this in this grouping. So Megarapture being the most famous and being the first of the group known and therefore it well first of it scientifically written them out. So therefore the family's famous for that. If you'll see on the paper it'll say like theropod and then Megaraptor. There's no sense of is it a solarosaur, is it a carnosaur? We we don't know at this point. Uh, it's being baited back and forth and so that's when it's so cool. Now Regardless of anything, it's still a neat animal. It's this, it's like it's the best of both. It's kind of like how trucks are big and they have like the, the back cab area and then cars are small and slender. And so like allosaurs are like cars and trucks are like trucks. And it's like one of those like the 80s vehicles that have like, it was a car with a truck back basically. It's a mixture of these different groups in appearance overall. So what we're seeing is that with the South, South America in particular had its large carcara dinosaurs. It had its... Uh, the abelosaurs, right? We also have this other group here of megaraptors, another predator. So that's really cool to kind of look at the environment and how, and, and how it works. I did Dranosaurus a couple weeks ago. There are bite marks, the scavenging marks on, on, on Dranosaurus skeleton that may be from Orcaraptor, which is a cousin of megaraptor. So we're seeing they're in the environment, right? They're seeing evidence they're there. So this is one of those things where I can't really review the toy because, I mean, it's a theropod. We have from its cousins some neck vertebra, back vertebra, some you know, but I can't say much because we don't have much. Uh, but from the skull, I can, like I said, the skull is very you know arrow shaped. And if I did not know this animal, first of all, I, I mean, I would say the feet are weird, but I think that's more of the engineering of the toy. The very long toes. I don't recall there being any foot bones found. If I'm wrong, please tell me in the comments, and, or Luke, better yet, send a link in the comments. But overall, that this is a group uh, that is new to paleontology and is being debated where it fits in. So this is one of those things where, for me, my career started. There was dinosaurs for that group that we were, they were debating and all that. And now they're kind of settled. Uh, we're kind of settled on where they fit in. These guys are now that group. So I'm kind of excited about that. Overall, like I said, I, I look forward to seeing more. And I can't wait to do a Megaraptor Part 2 because I'm pretty sure there's gonna, they're going to find more specimen and they're going to write more papers and give more of anatomy and oh yeah it fits in here and eats this more like uh, we do think they're theropods uh sorry we do think they're carnivores they eat meat we see bite marks on, on scavenging large claws like this definitely but the head has this really neat you know very narrowing thin skull and so it makes it fun for me is that i've spent so much time looking at different dinosaur types that i can see a silhouette and go oh, that's, a, that's a tyrannosaur you know you can see scales in a museum that's that's a ceratosaur, you know, that's a bellosaur. These guys kind of break those rules, which makes sense because think about for uh, carnivores in general, like mammal, mammal carnivora. We have the bears, we have the lions or big cats, panthera, tigers, lions, leopards. We have canids, dogs, wolves, all that, right? Hyenas, right? Now we know evolutionarily hyenas are closer to cats, but hyenas have taken a dog-like role and they're overall, they're not like cats where they're as lightweight as a cat. It's even a tiger or a lion are big, but they're still lighter, more light built than a bear or a dog, right? So think about the Megaraptor like this hyena. It's not hyena in lifestyle, but this other thing that we're not sure where it fits in, but it's different and it, it makes a mark, right? So, and I know it's not a very informative video. It's just that that's what this is. And I, 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 I tend to be concerned about this in the teaching world because sometimes you know we as educators want to say this is what this is this is the data this is the thing but there's always this frontier of science that we don't know what's what what everything we don't know uh, I, I often find it interesting how some people can read a small book on dinosaurs and be like I'm an expert but then I talk to a person with a PhD and they're just like this it's like talking to Yoda it's very much a sense of what does this mean? I don't know. Maybe this. What is, I don't know. Maybe that, you know? So for me, this is like a frontier idea. And I, I, I was reluctant to do a video on this because this animal, what do you review? Oh, that has feathers. So, I mean, if it is a slower sword, maybe, you know, but that's not, there was no evidence of that in the site. Um, it would be wrong, but it would be right. You know, kind of, if it's an allosaur, less likely. If it's a slower sword or a tyrannosaur, maybe more so, but we don't know. So it's hard to kind of uh, review this, but I do like the way it looks. I like the skull. I like the proportions. And the, you know, from what we know of its relatives, Megaraptor's relatives, the neck and back, it, it's a, it's a, it's 
they're they seem about the right size. Uh, its relative has a would have a wider chest though. So Tyrannosaurus have really and they have obviously they have barrel chest animals compared to other theropods. So it, I would say it should be more barrel chest to roof, it should be more wide. But overall, um, still a pretty nice model. And like I said, it's something to look forward to. So I, I mean, I suggest you look forward to it uh, because there's a lot. You'll get a chance to see science and paleontology unfold in front of you. Whereas normally we can just say, oh, Allosaurus did this, it did this, it looked here like that. Here you're seeing something where we're like, oh, we found a thing and, you know. <laughs> So that's kind of fun for me. Uh, it's also annoying for me because I like to know everything, but it's kind of fun for me to see that we're going to see this as it unfolds. So you keep digging in South America and finding more of these guys and re realizing what the hell they fall together and fall in. But anyway, so back on the review part, it's like, it does that. Yes. But I can still say even with the Ostrobinator and the uh, Hereafter, these guys, they just look very different than most theropods. And of course they do because they're in different environments and different prey and different conditions. So it makes sense that they look different, but it's kind of neat for me because what I know about different groups, they defy some of those rules. So that's just, it's like someone who's never seen, I'm trying to think of an animal, that's a, a meerkat. It's like, it's not a rodent, it's not a, not a rabbit, it's not a weasel, it's close to the cats too, right? So it's like this other animal that's kind of like different than everyone else. So anyway. But I will say that I think it was a 2014 paper suggesting that it's close rel it, it's relative of Eotyrannus. So if, if it is a Tyrannosaur, Eotyrannus, this is a, let's see, this is a, collect a Eotyrannus. It's the only Eotyrannus ever. I've never done a video on Eotyrannus because one, it's not the best model in my opinion. And two, it's the only one I can find at the right now. So it's an early Tyrannosaur from England. So it's put next to those guys if it's in a Tyrannosaur group, Tyrannosaur family. It would be Pinesi Eel Tyrannus, which is out in England, this is from South America. So let that sink in for a minute. But anyway, that's 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 Mega Raptor. That's a. I said nothing in this whole time. But here you are. Uh, thank you guys for seeing next week. Please uh, like, subscribe, and share. I see that the subscribers are going up. I appreciate that a lot. It means a lot because I, I didn't do this for like science money or anything. I don't have money. I just think that this is a cool way to teach kids or people about dinosaurs and that. I'm also trying to shame, which I know shame's bad these days. I'm trying to shame people who make toys to make them more, more accurate. <laughs> that if I'm putting on here like, hey, your Stegosaurus put out three toes. If they put four toes, we should shame them because you can Google this now. Anyway, like, subscribe, share. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next week.